a path that maybe they need to uh, walk on, but uh, with you, okay? So they could involve you in their decision. Bless this time in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, we want to continue, okay, with uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 7, no, 7, no, not 17, 7, okay? And um, last week, we, you know, we start with the uh, Corinth, 1 Corinthians 7, and, uh, and uh, we, we talk about that. We normally hear the letters that Paul sent to the, to the church, uh, church in, uh, in Corinth, at least. Uh, and other churches, and but we never hear or never you know read about those letters that churches you know sent to Paul and ask him for questions. So this one is uh, um, uh, one of those that the church is asking Paul some question and Paul you know trying to 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 answer. Okay, um, last week we ended about uh, we call about divorce. Uh, with two Christians, okay? When two people are Christian, and, uh, and they're, what, how God see the divorce with two Christians. Today, we want to start with uh, one Christian and non-Christians. This is what we start, and we want to be in uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 12 to 16. We want to start, and uh, we want to go, you know, kind of the ending of the, of the chapter. But uh, the first one was with two Christians, are married, how God see the divorce. And you want more information? Um, you could uh, see the video, okay, for the last week, okay, the preaching of last week. We want to start now with the one Christian and non-Christian, you know, it is. Um, I'm going to start, you know, right now, okay. Um, 1 Corinthians 7, 12 to 16, okay, it says, to the rest I say this, I, not the Lord, if any brother has a wife who is not believer, or he's not a believer, and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. 13. And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer, and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife, and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children will be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. 15. But if the unbeliever leaves, let it be so. Then the brother or the sisters are not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. 16. How do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? So, first of all, you know what I say, the two Christians. Now, one Christian and a non-Christian, okay? And, and in general, um, uh, the, the question that the, that the Corinthians, that the church in Corinth are telling Paul is, is the, the whole thing was, is that better to serve the Lord as a single, or is it better to serve the Lord as a married? That's kind of the thing. Well, I'm single, okay, so I, I think it's better, you know, to do it that way. And other people are like, no, well, is that better to be single than I could divorce my wife and serve the Lord? That's, that's kind of the tricky, you know, things. So you could see sometimes when somebody asks something, you know already this person was thinking, and sometimes he's trying to go, you know, around the corners, okay, to do his will. So this is what's happening over here. And say, and how about this? And how about that? And how about this? And how about that? And it's more the times, you know, or more the time, more of the things that, or the question that the uh, church in Corinth asked Paul is those tricky questions, you know, how about this? And how about? So then uh, Paul, you know, is trying to to answer. He answered uh, first, and this one is answered to the people who are married with unbeliever. And when he say this, he say, the, to the rest I say this, I, not the Lord. Sometimes when Paul write this, people say like, huh, is that not the Lord? What I need to hear, Paul? It's over here. Paul says that it's not, it's not uh, the Lord, it's him. 
So why need to hear Paul instead of, so they don't pay attention to that, okay? But it's not like that. If, you could, if we could go a little bit back, it's when they say, uh, the Lord, not me, is, you know, talking about when two are Christian. The meaning is Paul saying this topic is already talked by Jesus, okay? That's we read, you know, last, last week. This topic already said by Jesus, so it's not me, it's the Lord. But in this case, Jesus doesn't say anything about this topic. So Jesus used Paul to talk about this topic, okay? So don't think that because Paul says, I, not the Lord, it means like, ah, we don't pay attention to that. No, it means that Jesus doesn't talk about this topic, but now... Paul bring this topic because they need it. In that time, when Jesus came, he was talking um, uh, um, about the marriage with two Christians. And this was hard. It was so hard then because he wanted to um, let them know that the marriage is important. Okay? So even the, when uh, Jesus finished talking, the, the disciples say, huh, so really hard, you know, the, to, to be married. Yeah, it is. It's always um, uh, in our life, all the things that you want to accomplish, okay, require um, time, strength, money, okay, to make things happen. If you don't work in, at least in your house, okay, imagine you don't want to work in your house, you want to, nah, I don't want to leave, leave it like that, then then getting all, you know, you could see how the, peop- how the people who doesn't pay attention to the houses look like. Okay? It's the same thing with the marriage. You need to start working all the time. Sometimes we're thinking that we want to get married, then everything going to be, ah, okay? Like a, ta-da! That's all my problems. It's not like that. We need to remember that it's two, uh, the marriage, it's two sinners getting together and work together. So imagine, sometimes you're thinking like, oh, if I do this, the, the, my, my better half, okay, complete me, okay? That's, you know, we see normally in the movies. Oh, it complete me, so I don't need to work some, you know. Everything is complete after I marry. Like a, no, it's two to bring our own problems, get together, and need to work in order to know how to work together in these things. That's the, that's the, that's the marriage. And so you don't want to work Oh, that's gonna, you, you will see the, the results. So when uh, Paul is talking, not me is the Lord, oh, sorry, not me is the Lord, means Jesus already talked about this. When Paul says, the Lord, or I, not the Lord, means Jesus didn't talk about this topic, but now I, I talk. So that's kind of the, the meaning. So he says over here, if any brothers, um, if any brother means Christians, because he's talking about brothers. If any brother has a wife who is not a believer, and she's willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. Okay? Oh, but it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. And then, and then we will see later why he said that. And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer, and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. Okay? And then I want to move a little bit to the next one. They say, but if the unbeliever leaves, okay? How about, I'm a Christian, I'm not divorced, you know, and I know it's hard, it's hard. But finally, this person leaves. He don't want to live with me, and he leaves. What well, he says, if the unbeliever leaves, let it be so. The brother or the sister is not bound in such circumstances. They say, if they go, then you're free, kind of stuff. And he said over here, God has called us to live in peace. Why Paul say this? Because it says that when you marry to a, 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 an unbeliever, okay, means that you don't have too much peace. He says, if he leave, okay, now you could live in peace. What does that mean? That sometimes when we marry an unbeliever, okay, it's not peace um, in, in our places. So um, uh, uh, Paul said this to them, and say, look, if, there, if you as a Christian, you just want to live because the, the, it's difficult, the life over there, you know, stop, okay, think twice about it. 
But if that person leaves, you don't need to repent and then looking for, no, let them be. And now the peace, <laughs> maybe you're going to come with you. That's kind of what the Paul is talking about this topic, okay? Paul saying, you, now you will have peace, okay? Like, oh, wow, so you don't have peace before? Or why are he talking about like that? So this is, um, uh, uh, the recommendation of Paul, he says, look, don't marry to an unbeliever. Don't ma- this is talking, you know, to the, to the current and talking to us today. Don't marry to an unbeliever. Um, the marriage is, is, is need to be work, okay? So it's not, it's not easy. But uh, when both have the same thought, that those are both believers, you know, we know that the God is, you know, is, is working on it. But what is not, when one is unbeliever and the other one, it's, it's harder, you know, to do like that. So that's why it says, don't marry with an unbeliever. This is a, it's a recommendation of Paul, and maybe my recommendation too. If you want to marry it, marry an unbeliever, okay? Still, they need to work on it, yes. It's not going to be, ah, yes. But at least you're both together, you know, getting together, you know, with the Lord. When you focus in the Lord and your spouse focus in the Lord, then you're getting closer. Okay? You're here, you're here. You focus in you, or you focus in you, okay? It don't, you know, that sometimes they, you know, push in and, but uh, when you focus in the Lord and you see the Lord and you see Him, and, uh, and your spouse, focus on the Lord, okay? Love you more the Lord than you. Focus on the Lord, then you get together automatically, okay? So this is kind of the thing. You have the same Lord, and you're looking for him, okay? Then you want to be close to your spouse because you put the Lord first instead of trying to, you know, get in or, or pull in, okay? So that is kind of the recommendation that Paul have. You know, you have an opportunity, Okay, marry, but marry to a, a, a Christian person. It says, uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 17 says, Nevertheless, each person should live as a believer in whatever situation the Lord has assigned to them. Just as God has called them. This is a rule I lay down in all churches. Now, start with this, okay? Uh, Paul says, look, each person should believe as a believer in whatever situation the Lord assigned to them. Why? Because they're asking, um, is that better to serve the Lord as a single? Okay, is that the better Lord, you know, to treat the Lord as a, as a married? Okay, is that better as a single than I divorce and then be more holy? And then and Paul say, eh, you know, like that. Okay, well, so how about, you know, if I already divorce? Okay, am I need to remarry it? Or is it okay to become, to be a single? They say, it doesn't matter. Oh, but how about, how about if um, uh, this is my second wife or my third wife? Do I need to go back and then, and then start doing the things all right? And then, uh, uh, so I need to divorce my second wife or my third wife to get married now with my first wife? It's always all these kind of questions. And then Paul says, please, okay? Whatever situation the Lord has assigned to them, just as God has called them, the way that God calling you, is God calling you as a single? Serve the Lord. Is God call you as a married? Serve the Lord. Is God call you as a, in the third, or the you know, second, the third marriage? Serve, uh, the way it is, the, the, the place that you are, Serve the Lord. Don't try to go back and try to fix the stuff. No. The same, the where you are, serve the Lord. It's more important serving the Lord than your condition. It's better to serve the Lord. doesn't matter if you're uh, um, uh, uh, single or you're married or you're divorced or you're widow. It's like it, it doesn't matter. The, messy, the better you could do is serve the Lord. That is, you know, that is uh, uh, what does Paul, you know, want us to, to do. Is say, no matter your situation, married, single, divorced, uh, widow, widower, remarried, whatever, okay? God can work in your lives. Instead of thinking that you can or, or how can you walk with the Lord, just serve him 
in the state that you are right now, in the, situ in the situation you're living right now, serve the Lord. Don't try to do which one is better because each of us have a different um, situation or, 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 or state in our, in our life. And sometimes we're thinking that it's going to be better that way. Oh, if I just, okay, it's like a, the first lie that, the, well, one of the lies that the Satan, you know, talked to us is, look, I really want to serve the Lord, but I don't know if I'm married, as I'm married, you know, sometimes I spend too much time with my wife and the problems and the kids, and, and if I have more time, I could serve the Lord better. So if I divorce, who I want to have really serving the Lord. And the other thing, like uh, there's people who are single and say, yeah, you could serve the Lord because you're single. You have more time, like that. but sometimes you really want to get married that don't serve the Lord because you're worried like, ah, I want to marry, I want to marry, when am I going to get married? So it's all this, Satan is always going to work that way, okay? He's going to work first if you're single. He's going to tell you, oh, you need to get married to serve better the Lord. Okay? And if you're married, they'll say, oh, phew, you could serve me better, okay? If you have more time. So the devil always wants to tell you that the other side, what does it mean? Okay, what's the saying that you have? The grass is always greener on the other side. They always want to say that to you, like, oh, it doesn't matter who you are, you're not ready, okay? The devil, you know, was saying like a, a this romantic thing that your, your life should be better than it is right now. It's not enough, you know, what, you, what you're uh, uh, um, experience right now. But if you trying to go to the other side, it's going to be much better. So the devil wants you to do that. That in order to accomplish God's will, the, the way that you are right now is not the best one. The best one is if you're single, you need to be married, you know, to be in that position. And if you're married, I'll say, oh, maybe my wife is, 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 or my husband is in the middle of my service to the Lord. He doesn't allow me to do that. This is the devil. The devil wants you to do that, to see that way. This is a, one of the lies. Second lie that he has is... It's not the time, okay? It's not the time. You could, uh, um, you have said, Jesus, is this, in, this thing is not only to serve the Lord, but it's also to accept Jesus in your heart. When I was young, I, I have, in the side of my, of my dad, is there 14, uh, have a, uh, uncles and aunts. And, um, my grandma and my grandpa, they're Christians, okay? And my aunt and uncle was seven and seven, okay, they're 14. And seven was Christians, or Christ, well, at least they go to the church. <laughs> and the other one are not because of the testimony of the other one, okay? So I joined, you know, this family, okay, and um, and I was thinking, like, huh, I don't know who is right of both sides. One, they say they go to the church, okay, but I don't see change in their life. But the other ones, you know, um, uh, don't go to the church, but I don't, I don't you know. Uh, so which one is better? So my point was, like, I don't want to make a decision right now. When I get older, okay, when I almost die, my goal is like that. When I almost die, I just accept Jesus in my heart and go to heaven. That's my goal. The point is, like, I don't know when I'm going to die. <laughs> so it's like, if I knew when I'm going to die, or oh, a year before, a month before, I do this, and then, win-win. Oh, I do what I want in the world, and now I'm going to go to heaven. Ta -da! That was my goal. When, when we're thinking that way, okay, even if people come and say, you know, Jesus loves you, and Jesus is like, nah, 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 nah. no, I don't want to. Because my goal was, or, or, or what I'm thinking is like, I, I'm, more, I'm smarter than you. Okay, I just, I'm just living in the world, doing the thing that I want, thinking that I'm, say, 
I'm free, even though I'm a slave to the sin. Okay? But I think that I'm free, trying to do my work. Okay? And then later, get the best of both. That was my goal. Satan, the, play, the way that Satan worked in that mindset is like a, you, you could be free all this time and now go to heaven. It was Satan's one. Because he's thinking maybe he never got to the point that he has said Jesus. Maybe he died before he thinking they want to do it. Okay? That's Satan, okay, who want to work that way. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You go to the Lord, but not now. No, now. No, don't accept Jesus right now. No. You still have a lot of life. The thing that we don't understand is that we are slave or Satan <laughs> already. That's why he's thinking like, huh, stay there. Stay there. Do what you want to do, even though I put you in your heart to do it. Okay? Why? Because when you become a Christian, okay, when you try to follow the Lord, Satan says, like, a, <clears throat> First of all, before that, he wants to try to, you know, try to fish, okay? He's trying to get you back, okay? He wants to try as much as he can to, to get you back. And it's when, when, when you become a Christian and you say, huh, now I become a Christian and my life is harder than before. It's because you start changing and the devil knows that and he wants you back, okay? But then later, when he finally knows, like, oh, I lost him, Okay? For now, I lost him. But I don't want his potential bring more people to the Lord. So if I don't want more people come to the Lord, my way to work now is to make them think that he's not prepared yet. Okay? I don't want that he could know that whatever he have right now is enough to bring more people to the church and say, no, I'm not prepared right now. I'm not prepared now. If I had said Jesus when I was young, i thinking, oh, when I finish uh, um, uh, high school, then I could serve the Lord. When I know more, okay? Oh, when I finish college, I will serve the Lord, yes. No, now, I don't know too much, okay? Oh, when I um, uh, uh, find this job, then I want to serve the Lord. Okay, no, it's not yet. Oh, when I'm married, I want to serve the Lord. Oh, no, no, no. Um, when my kids... Um, when I have kids, I will serve the Lord. Oh, when my kids are out of the house, I will serve the Lord. Oh, when I retire, I want to serve the Lord. This is the way that Satan's work with us. It lets you know that you're not prepared to bring others to Christ. And when you believe that, you will be in the time pass, and time pass, and you don't see like a, okay? Why? Because he's thinking you're not prepared. When I show, you know, I mean, show you, you know, the line, <laughs> okay? If you are a one, you said Jesus, you're one, you could be talking to zero, minus one, minus two, minus a hundred, okay? But it's always need to work, okay, in your life. So the devil first don't want you to serve the Lord. So he want to entertain you. When he knows that you have interested, He's trying to, okay, pull you back. When he finally, you know, uh, when you leave and try to follow Jesus, he will tell you this, yeah, I lost one, but I don't want to lose all the potential all these people have. I could lose one, but not all the potential that, that all the people could come for only one person. And he's working with you. So over here, when we're talking about the, the, uh, how Satan, you know, kind of, kind of work is. I'm not prepared right now. Okay, I'm. I need to, you know, keep working on it. And and uh, uh, Paul says, "Come on. The way that you are right now, you're enough to do God's will. You prepare already. You have said this in your heart. You prepare already to bring more people to Christ. Is what Paul is saying." Don't think in that, that, that uh, uh, if I um, I'm, uh, have a retreat, you know, for many days and, uh, and really I'm going to be more spiritual. It's not like that. It's more how, start, how can you know or how can you let God work in your heart, becoming more like him and still bring it more people, you know, to the Lord.
then we will, you know, uh, um, Paul continue uh, answer the question that they have. Say now, First Corinthians seven eighteen to twenty. Say, was a man already circumcised when he was called? He should not become uncircumcised. Was a man uncircumcised when he was called? He should not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and incircumcision, and incircumcision is nothing. Keeping God's command is what counts. Each person should remain in the situation they were when God called them. What is doing? Because the question is different. Okay, how about if we're Christian, we're Christian? How about if one is Christian and one is not? And then how about if one is late and one is free? Okay, what is this? Oh no. This, this is no slave is free. This one is like a, how about if I have a Jewish background or I have a, a, a Gentile background? Uh, who, is, who, who could serve better? And then what he says, the same thing. It's over an hour. First, he's talking about married and unmarried. Okay? Now he's talking about Jewish and Gentiles. He says, he's not talking about circumcision. He's talking about those who are circumcised are Jewish and circumcision are Gentiles. And then they say, it doesn't matter. In circumcision, what I say, 19 says, circumcision is nothing. And in circumcision is nothing. What does it mean? If you're a Jewish, you have a Jewish background, it doesn't mean anything. If you have a gentle background, it doesn't mean anything. What is, what is uh, important? Keeping God's command is what is important. They say, stop talking, how about this, how about that, how about this, how about that? And then the next one is the same thing. Now he's talking about slave and free. How, about, how can I serve better the Lord? Am I, am I free? I serve the Lord better? Or am I a slave? I will serve, you know, the Lord's better. What he says over here, when you, when you are a slave, well, when you, well, 1 Corinthians 7, 21, 24, say, were you a slave when you were called? Do you let it trouble you? Although, if you can gain your freedom, do so. 22, for the one who was a slave when called, to faith in the Lord is Lord's free person. Similarly, the one who was free when called is Christ's slave. 23, you were bought and a prize. Do not become a slave for human beings. 22, 24, 24 say, brothers and sisters, each person as a responsible to God shall remain in the situation they were when they got called them. So you could see the 24 and the 20 and the same thing were in when God called them. When God called them. The same thing. He's explaining the same thing. Okay, you're, it doesn't matter if you're married or unmarried. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you are um, uh, Jewish background or Gentile background. It doesn't matter that. And now it doesn't matter if you're free or slave. And it, what he's saying, like, a, if you think you're free, okay, uh, you are a slave, you know, in, in, in the sin, is what he's saying. Because when you accept Jesus, now you become a slave of Christ, is what he's saying over here. And then if you feel a um, slave and you're in the Lord, I want to let you know that you're free. That's what he's saying. And this says, if you can gain your freedom, do so. It doesn't mean that you need to stay the way that you are. It's start serving the Lord where you are. But could continue with the Lord, and the Lord want to open, okay, the things for you. It doesn't mean like, a, oh, if I'm a slave, um, and I become a Christian when I'm a slave, I need to be like that all the time. So you have opportunity to, uh, to be free, I don't want to take it because God called me to be a slave. That's, that's the, the, say, no, 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 no. You have opportunity to be free. Take it. Take it. I want you to start serving the Lord, the place that you are. But I want you to grow, okay, with him. Ah, uh, okay. First Corinthians 7, 25, 28 say, now, about virgins, I have, co no, I have no command from the Lord, but I give a judgment as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. Because of the present crisis, I think that it is good for a man to remain 
as he is. Are you pledged to a woman? Do not seek, do not seek to be released. Are you free from such a commit, commitment? Do not look for a wife. 28. But if you do marry, you have no sin. And if a virgin marries, she has no sin. But those who marry would face many troubles in this life. And I want to spare you this. Now, over here they say, whoa, wait a minute, okay? What, what, what is the situation over here? You read in the tw uh, in 25, it say, the last part say, um, but I give you a judgment as one by the Lord's mercy and trustworthy. Okay, no, 26 says, because of the present crisis. Okay. It's what happened in that time. They have a crisis. Maybe they have a persecution. Okay? And then because of that, you know, uh, thing, um, uh, uh, the, the, what does Paul want to let you know and say, look, if you're not married, don't marry it. Say like that. If you're married, that's okay. Continue like that. But uh, just to let you know, I say this because I know that this present crisis, if that hit you, it's going to be in some case easy for you to deal if you're single than if you are with family. What is this about? Imagine, you know, that, uh, that they grab you and then they, they try and uh, uh, they talk to you and say, I don't want to deny Jesus, you know, do whatever you want with me. But how about if they get the wife? They get the kids, and they torture them. Okay? It's a different. That's why Paul is talking about this. Look, if this person crisis hit you, it's better to you be the way that you are. Okay? That, I, I don't want you to change because it's going to be hard. Okay? I just want to let you know that. It's, it's, this is kind of the, the thing that he said. And when he say virgin, he doesn't talk about uh, only uh, females. He's talking about both. And, and the main thing is like a unmarried, okay? Of course, you know, they'll be coming for a, for a Jewish background or for a, a Gentile background, but they say, yeah, you, you're, you're unmarried, is what he's, he's saying, okay? Be like that, because if this present crisis hit you, okay, it's better to be single than to be married because of, I don't want you to suffer. That's, that's the, the main point of, uh, of, of Paul. And he knows what does that mean. 2 Corinthians 11, 23, 28, Paul said this. They say, are there servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder and been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. 24, five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from the Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at the sea, and in danger from false believers. 27, I have labored and toiled uh, and have often gone without sleep. I have, unknown, have known hunger and thirst and I have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. So Paul is telling the Corinth, look, I know how to live, okay? I know how to suffer for the gospel, okay? And then, and I, I, that's why uh, Paul was telling, uh, the opportunity to be single, be him single. But he says, those who are gifted to be single, not everybody could do it. Someone are, are, are gifted, have a gift, okay, to be single. Some have a gift to be married, okay? But I say, I don't want to command you to do like that. I just want you to know how hard it is, okay, and how much better I don't want you to suffer, you know, like that. Imagine if, uh, if all these things happened uh, when Paul was married or with child or, or happened something like this.
Okay? So that's, that's the main point of Paul. Look, because this, this crisis, okay, could be worse. So I know what does that mean. So I want you to don't suffer. That's why I tell you this. Then they go, um, ah, and then continue. First Corinthians 7, 29 and 31. Through 31, okay? What I mean, brothers and sisters, is that the time is short. From now, no, from now on, those who have wives should live as if they do not. Those who mourn as if they did not. Those who, have, who are happy as if they were not. Those who buy something as if it were not theirs to keep. 37 or 31. Those who use the things of, of the world as if not engrossed in them. For this world in its present form is passing away and over here Paul is not saying look I give you freedom to don't have a um, um, responsibility from your family or I have freedom to you don't have responsibility for your wife it's not what he's saying what he's saying is look if you think that um, those who have wife should live if they do not means if, the, if the, your family is more important than God, okay, put attention to that. If, if, if you think that being happy in this world is the main thing, okay, put attention to that. Why? Because the time is short. What he's saying is, yeah, live your life, but don't forget about the second coming, okay? Be okay, but put eye in the eternity, Think about what you're doing, okay, because of God's will in you. So it's what he's saying. Look, enjoy. Enjoy what you need to enjoy. But don't think that it's everything. It's more. I, um, sometimes, you know, people um, uh, come to me and, uh, and then ask me, like, uh, you know, what's going to happen in the future, you know, the second coming and tribulation and, uh, and uh, all this kind of stuff. And then and what I, what I want to talk to them, like, look, don't think that you're so smart to, to understand how to do it, okay? If you right now have the time to be closer to the Lord, get closer to the Lord. Why do you worry about uh, the things that's coming when you right now could... Join the Lord, and whatever is coming, is coming. It's better with the Lord than without Him. So you could do this, okay? And thinking in the future, okay? In the, in the eternity, so with the Lord. So choose the Lord right now, and together we'll figure out what's going to come. But sometimes they think like, oh, I don't know. Like, a, they say, no, don't, don't worry about the, the future when you invite Jesus in your heart, okay? And then you have to do the decision right now. Take it. Don't wait it. Take it. And say, the, the, the time is short, is what, the, what the, um, Paul says. And he said, you know, <laughs> 2,000 two, two years ago. But if you live the life like that, it's okay if you could make a... Um, uh, um, plans for tomorrow. You can make plans for tomorrow. You can make plans for next week. You can make plans for next month. You can make plans for uh, next year. You can make plans for next five years. You can make plans for next ten years. Do it. That's okay. But live your lives like today was the last day. Live your lives thinking that maybe God is coming tomorrow. And when you have that perspective, you, you kind of see it, okay? Like, uh, okay, I know the Lord is coming. Yes, I enjoy this time, but don't you too much. Don't think it's everything. Keep seeing that. Keep doing plans in your life. That's okay. But understand that maybe that, you know, God is coming before or 
we live, you know, before that happened. We're not against to do plans, but uh, what does Paul is trying to put on us is the urging, okay, to be okay with him, okay, if he coming tomorrow. The, if he comes tomorrow, you know for sure, do you live the life, you live this day the same way? You live different if you know that tomorrow uh, Jesus is coming or you leaving? That's kind of the mentality that um, Paul wants the Corinthians, you know, to have. Matthew 24, 40, 44 say, So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at, the, at an hour when you do not expect him. So this is what it is. So live, make plans for many years, but live your life like it's tomorrow God is coming. Psalm 39, 5 say, you have given me only a few days to live. My whole life doesn't seem like uh, anything to you. No one lasts any longer than a breath. This is true even for those who feel secure. So they say he was thinking like any time we could live. And we know people that we think in the wanna see and then finally they're not with us. We're thinking like oh yeah we say bye to people and then we're thinking like I wanna see them. Uh, but uh, sometimes we don't have the time for that. I remember my, my grandma. My grandma, uh, she was a Christian, and, and she, you know, I think you know, I become a Christian because of his prayers. Is what I think. I will figure out that later. But she was a person of, of prayer. And each time when I go to Mexico, since I'm living here, I go to Mexico each year, you know, when I go with the, with the mission. So then I go visit her. And each time when I visit her, I, I, I say to her, I, when I say bye to her, I say, hey, wait for me. Do not, do not leave. Okay, wait for me to not leave. Meaning, don't die. Okay, <laughs> wait for my next year that I come over here to say hi to you. So then I always say that to her. When I leave, say, hey, do not leave. Okay, do not leave. I come in next year. And she say, I want to be here. They say like that. And then next year, the same thing. Hey, hey, don't leave. I come in. And then like this. Until she was 93. And then I, I said that to her and say, hey, do not leave. And he, he, he looked at the face like, a, I don't know if I will be here. And then like, Phew. she knows, okay, that it's coming. And finally, I'll be able to go to see her, you know, before she, but she doesn't recognize me. You know, she's, she was, it wasn't the same. But uh, those kind of um, uh, um, uh, things that, that, that happen in her life, that we need to, you know, still thinking about it. We, we want to go to that direction too. And what does God want us is to be focused in him when we are alive, okay? When we make the decision to be with him and continue with him and live the life thinking that he is coming soon. So let live our life better, okay? That's, that's the main thing. Become more like Jesus. It's what he wants from us. So the whole thing over here with, uh, with Paul is saying that to you. It doesn't matter the stage of your life. Start serving the Lord right now. And you have opportunity to be with him, be with him. And you have a mentality that this is everything, don't have that mentality. There's more better things coming. Let's pray. Uh, Father, thank you so much you know, for today. Thank you for uh, we be able to... Um, <sighs> understand, you know, how uh, Satan, you know, work, and how if we, you know, buy those lies about him, and then we kind of let the time pass, thinking that we have more time, and, and, and we could go come to you instead of just follow you, and, and embrace you, and, and do your will. Um, bless uh, this congregation, and help us, you know, to do your will. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, so now we want to start Okay. The communion. Yes.